Revelation 12. Hallelujah. We good everywhere? Good. Not only are we in a new season, but we are in a shift in the spirit where things are moving rapidly. God is not only raising intercessors, but worship is going up like it's never gone up before. The purpose of this is because there is a war going on. Amen? And I think sometimes people don't realize that the reality of war and what's really happening. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 12, and verse 7, would you speak it with me? And it says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who was accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. What's very powerful here is that war was in heaven. Amen? So war originally originated in heaven. Amen? So in this, this unseen realm is where War started. Now, I want you to think about something. God created three major, what we call archangels. And in this creation, Lucifer was the first one created. Lucifer was created to express God's presence. He covered the universe with praise. That was his purpose. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. Michael was created to keep order. Lucifer, again, was created to express the presence of God through praise. Michael was created to keep order. Amen? So we see here that in this, they fought. So when Lucifer exalted himself, God removed him from his position because he was no longer submissive. He was out of of order. The reason why war started is because Lucifer went out of order. So everybody got that. Michael was there to put things in order or maintain order because God is the God of order. So when Lucifer, known as Satan, was cast to the earth in its atmosphere, this influenced man. His influence now is for man to kill man. His purpose is that mankind kill one another. Lucifer has been sentenced to the earth and its atmosphere. So he truly believes that if he can destroy man and mankind and destroy the earth, he can escape God's prison. But he's not too smart. Amen? So the only way in this to resist the influence of the self-destruction is to be covered by the blood of Christ Surrender the worldly way of life and express the love of Christ. I mean, the life of Christ, express the life of Christ in us by obedience and confession. That's how they overcame, by the testimony. Again, God created Lucifer to express praise that covers the universe. Again, God created Michael to maintain order. God created Gabriel to carry the information of truth by revelation to all realms of creation. I'm going to say that again. God created Gabriel to carry truth by revelation to all realms of creation. The basis of all things behind creation is order. Divine order. Because he is the God of order. The result of disorder is war. The result of disorder is what? War. War represents this. Wrath against rebellion. 
War is wrath against rebellion. Again, when, div- when disorder, when divine order is out of order, in other words, when God has set a divine order and the order is out of order, it results is wrath against rebellion because what it does is the fruit of disorder is rebellion. Amen? So where there is rebellion, you know that things are out of order. Divine order is not falling into place. And then this uh, promotes war. Wrath against rebellion. Go to Psalm 89. Again, the basis of all things behind creation is order. Psalm 89. In verse 11. Psalm 89, verse 11 through 18. Let's speak it together. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world in all its fullness, you have founded them. The north and the south, you have created them. To bar what? Herman, rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. What's the foundation? Righteousness and justice. So if that's the foundation of his throne, things that are in divine order are promoting what? Righteousness and justice, aren't they? If they're not in divine order, they're promoting wrath against rebellion. He says, mercy and truth go before your face. What's to say? Verse 15. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in light of your countenance. Now, let me share something about the word blessed. The word blessed, he said, blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In other words, they are walking in divine order. The word bless has a, a, a threefold. It means empowered. When you are blessed, you are empowered. And in this empowerment, you are empowered. You are empowered to prosper and you are empowered to succeed. That is called blessed. So when you speak someone, I bless you, you're not just saying some mystical word blessed. Well, I'm just blessed. Psh. No, you're not just blessed. When you speak blessed, I bless you. What you're saying is, I pray God empower you, prosper you to succeed. Amen? So when we say we're blessed and highly favored, it's because we are empowered, we're prosperous, and we're going to succeed because I'm favored. (laughs) So righteousness and justice are the foundation of Almighty's throne. Amen? Okay, let's go a little further. He says in verse 16, In your name they what? They rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness they are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. And in your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord and our king to the Holy One of Israel. So if righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne, you know that that's what he's going to establish no matter what. And anything that is out of that order will promote war, wrath against rebellion. Amen? It's God's wrath against rebellion. If you notice something that all the way through the Bible, so let me ask you this. If if war started off in heaven, think about this. There's a constant war, isn't there? Now I'm going to go just a little bit deeper before we go any further. Because I want to think, I want you to think about something else. If God established Michael to maintain order, right? Why did he bring us forth? Because he's training us up to maintain his order. See, this is only a training ground. All of this is a part of training. When everything begins to go, everything begins to burn in the universe and everything else associated with this, we are going to be with the Lord. We will maintain divine order. So everybody got it. Wherever he establishes and whatever he sets. Doesn't the Bible say that we will rule for 1,000 years? Amen? Well, if we're going to rule for 1,000 years, that means that it's going to be our responsibility under his authority to maintain divine order. That's called spiritual protocol. 
Everyone say spiritual protocol. And there is a spiritual protocol that God is requiring. And when we fall out of that spiritual protocol, we are out of order. And that's what gets us in trouble because it opens the door to the enemy. And we're going to talk more about that. Go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19 and verse 11. Let's speak this together. Revelation 19, verse 11. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges him what? He makes war. Why? What's he doing? Getting things in what? Divine order, according to his protocol, not according to man's. Okay? He was clothed with a robe. I mean, his eyes were what? Like flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Who's the armies of heaven? We are. In other words, you and I are now the armies of the eternal realm. We are in Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. Hello. God is training up the believers to become a part of His eternal army. You know, I was sitting with the Lord the other night, and it just, I'm telling you, there was such an impartation. I don't, I don't know if I can express it or explain it, but it's almost like I felt like we had it all wrong. Everything was just out of crazy and out of order. Everybody's looking at religiosity. Everybody's looking at a church that God is in. It's all goofy. It's just goofy because people have lost sight about military. He, this is all about a military where there is a kingdom, there is a king, there's a military, and there are citizens. We are a kingdom, an eternal kingdom. And I began to see ministries and other things. And, and he began to share with me that in the other ministries, people are looking at the area of what a ministry is doing or how many people are in it. or It's got nothing to do with anything. God has got a specific purpose, purpose for each ministry. There are a certain part of the army. You have the Navy. You have the Air Force. You have the Marines. You have all of those things in the physical realm are associated with the spiritual realm. And there are areas that each ministry is doing, but we're all working together. Amen. Every one, there's, there's those that are, uh, you know, even though that they, they may not believe in the gifts, they may, it doesn't matter. God is still using them for a specific thing. So they may be out evangelizing more. There's ministries of where they're interceding more. There's, does everybody got it? Spiritual warfare. All of this is associated with battalions. All over. And I began to see this whole thing. And I'm like, man, this is just plum crazy. People are looking at people in a, in a religious aspect. Oh, you're a believer or you're, you're just a believer of Jesus. But they look at it and as a religious aspect, not a militant aspect. See, God looks at it as an area. He, is, he died for me and you that we can enter his kingdom. Amen. He paid that price. It is a eternal military that's what it's all about and as he began to show me this i began to look at each place totally different now and how people are so out of rank and how god is trying to get his people back in rank and get things set up and get spiritual protocol people think they can just do anything they want because jesus is their lord and they are out of order and not submissive to authority and they have none and it's causing division and problems in the kingdom there is no lone rangers and there's no free spirit. Everyone is submissive to someone. Everyone. And if they're not, they're out of order. Has everybody got it? I, I'm telling you, the Lord was imparting this to me and I began to see so much foolishness, so much confusion, so much garbage. Everybody thinking, people thinking that they can just do whatever they want because Jesus is their Lord and Savior. And that's not true. Amen? There is a protocol God is requiring. And we must be ready because of what is coming. And it's coming very soon. Very soon. Amen? Praise God. Go to Joshua 5. 
Joshua chapter 5 and verse 10. Let's speak it together. Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover of the 14th day of the month at twilight on the plains of Jericho. And they ate of the produce of the land on a day after Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain on the very same day. Then manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land, and the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or our adversaries? And he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Now I want you to understand, who was this? This was Jesus. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is what? Holy, and Joshua did so. So the commander of the army appeared to Joshua. Now, you knew it had to be the Lord because you know that no one's allowed to worship an angel. Amen? He would have said, no, don't worship me, man. But because he was the Lord, he allowed him to worship him. So you know it wasn't an angel. It was the Lord himself. He is the commander of the army. So if he is the commander of the army, everything was instituted in the purpose that God would create a military force, an eternal military force who uphold his order. And that's what we are a part of. I know it may be a little hard to comprehend this sometimes because we've been so programmed for religiosity. But we've got to go beyond the walls. We've got to go beyond tradition. We've got to go beyond all of these areas and begin to look eternally, living from the future into the present. And when you begin to see all the way things, all the way past, all the way past, even the thousand-year reign, you begin to look beyond that because we're going to have glorified bodies, even the thousand-year millennium. Why? So we can go to and fro. Amen? To do what? To rule. To reign with Christ. Why? To keep order. Amen? So God is raising up an eternal army to maintain eternal order in an eternal realm. And that's what we are going to be called to do. So he judges by what? Righteousness and justice. Amen? So you may wonder, well, you may wonder, how did I get here? <laughs> How did I get here? Remember, God chose you. You didn't choose him. He chose you to be a part of his army. He chose you to be his son and daughter. He chose you that he, you could inherit all things. He chose you to sit in spiritual place, heavenly places, and seated. Amen? With every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. Every empowerment. Every area of prosperity and every area to succeed. Every area. But the enemy's influence penetrates the thought pattern of man to cause him to sway, to cause him to look upon himself, to cause him to be prideful, and to cause him to lust. And we'll talk more about that. Hallelujah. So the commander of the army of the Lord is Jesus. Amen. Now, provisions from heaven was now established from the earth because the provision from heaven ceased. Now it turned around. Now it was coming from where? The earth, because they ate from the earth. So it was established now from the earth. And war would expand to remove the unrighteous. God did it once by the flood, and now he will use his army. This will establish his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, with a king, a kingdom, military, and citizens. Again, God's war is called wrath against rebellion. Psalm 11. Wrath against rebellion. In verse 1. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? 
For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. Now listen. In other words, because they are unseen, so they are shooting at you. That's where the word tells us in Ephesians about the full armor of God, the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart. This is the dart he's talking about. The dart that comes against in your mind, in your thought pattern. It says that the wicked shoot against the upright in the heart. They shoot against them secretly. In other words, unseen. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is what? In his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone, and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His continent upholds the right upright. So the wicked bend the bow. They shoot the righteous. They shoot at the righteous from the unseen realm, don't they? Amen. It's an unseen war that the wicked has against you. That is called wicked against righteous. That's their war. Wicked against righteous. They are there to influence you, to promote you to rebel. Has everybody got it? Their purpose is to promote you to rebel against God's order or his protocol. That's their purpose. Because they know if they can establish you in disorder, that causes you to sow in the flesh and allows them for you to reap corruption. Because anything that you sow in the flesh reaps corruption. Amen? Go to James 4. James chapter 4. Wicked against righteous. That's their war. Why? To establish disorder through rebellion. They want to establish disorder through rebellion. Think about all the wars that's going on right now. There are people battling in wars. They don't even know why they're battling. They don't even know why they're killing people. That's all they know is they hate them. And they don't even know why they hate them. Because somebody told them to hate them. So their belief system is, I've got to hate them. (laughs) So all of this promoting Rebellion, isn't it? Amen? Because God's war is wrath against what? Rebellion. His purpose is to destroy rebellion. His purpose is not to destroy man. Amen? But the powers of darkness' purpose is to destroy man. There's a difference. One's promoted by hatred. Another one's promoted by love. In James 4 and verse 1, it says, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war where? In your members. Why? Because of the influence. Amen? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and what? And cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because... You ask amiss that you may spend it on your your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? He will flee from you. So the wicked influence of the unseen promotes the flesh to rebel against righteousness, which is the character of Christ. And the wicked, the war against righteousness, amen, which is the wicked war, they fight against us in so many ways The first thing they're always trying to do is manipulate, entice, and tempt. Again, the only way to overcome the wicked, according to the scriptures right here, the attack of the wicked is to submit to God. Then you can resist the devil. If you are not in divine order 
according to God's protocol, spiritual protocol, you cannot resist temptation. It's impossible. People say, well, I'm trying to quit drinking. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. Well, if they'll get in divine order and maintain divine order under God's protocol, they will resist the devil. Other than that, they're still rebellious. Does everybody got it? Because, listen, rebellion is an open door, isn't it? There's still areas of their life that they are rebellious to authority. They are not under cover. They're still rebellious to some authority, which opens the door. You cannot do it your way. It must be done according to the way of the Lord. Amen? You know, even there, remember the, the, the rich man that thought he was doing everything according to God's way. He said, well, man, I tithe, I do this, I go to church every Sunday, I go to every Bible study, every conference. And the Lord says, cool, I'll sell everything you have. He said, wait a minute, that's mine. See, so he wasn't submitting, was he? So God showed him that he could not submit under authority, so he could not resist the devil. So we see here that there is a spiritual protocol. It is a part of walking in the spirit. Spiritual protocol is a part of walking in the spirit. Go to Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. Oh, hallelujah, we are going to, I believe, be on a series of some of this because this is what the Lord is establishing right now in preparation so that we can withstand, so that we can fortify, and so that we can be united. You know, one of God's desires is that we become like-minded. Where there's not like-mindedness, there's rebellion. In verse 16, let's speak it together. I say then, walk in the spirit and shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or desire. Now listen, I want you to grab hold of something. It says walk, march. Something is a walk, there's a march in this. In divine order, or what we call spiritual protocol of the spirit. He says, if you're walking according to the spiritual protocol, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The word lust here is living under Satan's temporary system. Living under Satan's temporary system. Why? Because his system is temporary. Anything associated with lust is temporary. Amen? Doesn't it say that the lusts of the world will be diminished or will dissolve? And everything associated with it. So the only way that you can avoid living under Satan's temporary system. Is to live according to the spiritual protocol of the Lord. Praise God. Let's go a little further. Verse 18. For if you are led by the spirit. You are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are what? Evident which are adultery. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Lewdness. Idolatry. Sorcery. Outbursts of wrath. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and anything alike. In other words, touching unclean things, of which I tell you before, and just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Again, there's a word kingdom. Where there's a kingdom, there's a king, there's a military, and there are citizens. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That means control over the old man. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also what? Walk in the Spirit. In other words, let's get in divine order according to the protocol. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. Again, lust is living under Satan's temporary system. 1 Peter chapter 2. Spiritual protocol. 1 Pete 2 and verse 11. Beloved. I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly what? Lust, living under Satan's temporary system, which what? 
war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God on the day of visitation. Therefore, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors as those who are sent by him for punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants to God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. In other words, submit to God. Submit to the protocol. Submit to to his authority in his places of, of authority. Fear God. In other words, that's reverence, honor, and respect the Lord. Amen? Honor the King Jesus as your commander. Honor him as your commander. He's not only your Lord and your God, but he's the commander over each and every one of us. And he has set places in the kingdom of God. Listen, too many people look at people. We are not looking at people. We are looking at God's authority, not people. Amen? God has established authority. And when you submit under authority, you have authority. The measure you submit is the measure of authority is granted to you. Romans 13. I know a lot of people that refuse to gather together in fellowship. I know a lot of people that refuse to come to Bible studies and services and worship. They do their own thing. And let me tell you, they have no authority, none. Because the measure you submit is the measure of authority God grants. If you cannot submit, God cannot grant you authority. The only authority that's granted to you is self-sustaining. Other than that, he will not allow you. There will be limitations and too many people go beyond the limitations. And this is where trouble starts. They get too familiar, too comfortable. They think God is in everything that they're doing. And he's not. There are limitations that the Lord sets with us. That's a part of protocol. In Romans 13 and verse 1, let's speak it. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and authorities that exist are appointed by God. Hello. Therefore, whoever resists authority resists an ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to what? Evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you, for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he who does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Well, what's the war that God promotes? Wrath against rebellion. Hallelujah. Therefore, you must be what? Subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no one anything except love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments... You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this one saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? Love what? Does not harm, does no harm to what? A neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing the time that now is high time to what? Awake out of sleep. 
For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of rebellion <laughs> and let us put on the armor of light and let us put on, okay, let us what? Walk properly. What is that? Spiritual protocol. Walking property is according to spiritual protocol. There is no lone ranger. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in what? Revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust, living under Satan's temporary system. Again, everyone is subject to someone. Spiritual protocol involves the establishment of order, divine order, right? This allows us to know the limits God has set as proper and correct. It allows us to know the limits that is God has set for us as proper and correct. These are ethics and principles. They are also boundaries. Ethics, principles, and boundaries according to kingdom business. I want to say that again. It's ethics, principles, and boundaries according to kingdom business. Now, those who do not learn spiritual protocol will always be moving beyond their measurement of training ability. They move beyond their abilities. They will always move beyond their measure of their abilities. They are always stepping beyond the boundaries of protection. And they are extending the rule of authority to, that was not ordained to them. I'm going to say this again. When an individual does not know spiritual protocol, they move beyond their measure of ability, training abilities. They step beyond the boundaries of protection. And they extend rule, their rule of authority than what was ordained for them. They go beyond. Is everybody with me? Because they don't understand spiritual protocol. These are individuals that go into other churches and want to lay hands on everyone. They have no idea of spiritual protocol. They are self-promoting prophets, pastors, evangelists, and so forth. They have not been sent. They send themselves. They go wherever they want to go and think it's okay. And that's not okay. They do what they ever want to do because it's written but because it's written doesn't mean that you've been sent to do it. Amen? Everyone is sent by authority. Because when you are sent with authority, you have authority. You are covered. And we're going to be talking about the planting of the Lord, but not tonight. Is everybody okay? The basis of the kingdom is a military setting. It is the law of subjection. It is a spiritual military code of ethics. It is the law of subjection. And the spiritual military code of ethics. We are in constant combat against rebellion that wages a war against the righteousness of God in me and you. It is constant. The influence is always trying to promote rebellion. Amen. The measure of submission to these laws and codes will measure the degree of your authority. A person out of order is unbalanced. In submission to authority. You know, many people have had, you and I have always had problems with authority. Amen? Every one of us was born in rebellion. We had problems with authority. Some of us had problems because of, in our own families. Maybe we had, didn't have a father or, or our house was out of order or whatever. We had problems with authority. That's what's, let me tell you, when you have a problem with authority, it's because you're out of protocol. There's rebellion there. Remember, submit to God to resist the devil. You can, if you are not submitting to the protocol of God, it is impossible to resist the temptations. You may be able to resist one or two, but you can't resist them all. You cannot overcome. There'll be limitations on your life. And when a person who is in rebellion, they always want to run. They're not willing to submit because they want to find the easy way out because that's human nature. But divine nature says, I'm submitting because I'm willing to die than to go back. I'm willing to die than to go back to that world. I'm willing to die than sin against my king. See, that's true relationship. There's a lot of people that hoot and howl and pray in the spirit and all kinds of stuff. 
But when it comes to submission to authority, oh, hey, I'm okay. I do it my way. So where there's no submission, there is no authority. And God will not use that individual. That individual will go out and proclaim God is using them, but it will count for nothing. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. With our submission to authority, we receive authority. As long as it is exercised within the boundary set by the Lord. It must be exercised in a boundary set by the Lord. Go to Luke 7. Luke 7, verse 2. A certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. Now, a centurion servant is a what? He's a soldier. Amen? So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends of him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am, I am not worthy that you should what? Enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under what? Authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And those who were sent returning to the house found a servant well who had been sick. Now, this is powerful. Why? Because this man understood authority and he understood the authority of Christ. Here was a man that understood this because he was in the military, wasn't he? He had soldiers on him. He understood, he understood protocol. He might not have understood spiritual protocol, but he understood protocol. And protocol is what allowed his servant to get healed. Does everybody understand that? Praise God. God does not make leaders. He makes servants to become leaders. 2 Corinthians 10. Everything is earned. You know, even Samuel, when he was called to be a prophet at a young age, it took him years to fulfill his position. Does everybody understand that? King David was anointed as a child. It took him years to fulfill his position. Why? Because God was training him through his sufferings. Nobody is granted instantaneous position and authority. Nobody. Everybody goes into a place to submit under authority and learn. And as they learn, trust is earned. Amen? As trust is earned, God begins to release. The more that you are in protocol, the more God releases authority and favor. When you break it, he calls you back. He sets your boundary closer. He removes the boundary that was out further, and he says, come back. Let's get this right. Let's get this right. See, too many, you know, let me tell you, when people fall, pastors, evangelists, when they fall, they step off of their position because God removes them so that they can get restored. Amen? When a pastor or somebody falls into covenant or whatever, evangelist, it doesn't matter who, when they break covenant with God, God removes them from that position. Why? Because they did not follow spiritual protocol and fell themselves. And by falling themselves, they lost that position because the office is the place that's submitted to, not the person. So when that person in that position fails in that position, that person is removed so it can be restored to be replaced. And that's God's choice in time. Amen. Second Corinthians 10 verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we what? Do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are what? Mighty in God for what? 
pulling down strongholds. Now, let me ask you this. Are you able to pull down strongholds if you're not in submission? No. You can do all the scripture you want. You can quote to your dry in the mouth, to your spitting cotton. It must start with repentance. Repentance is the beginning of getting back in protocol. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds are memory lies. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing what? Every thought into captivity to the what? Obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when? When your obedience is what? Fulfilled. In other words, when you're in position, when you're uh, associated with spiritual protocol, you'll have authority over those thoughts. Hello? Is everybody okay? Good. Go to First Timothy 1. Verse 15. First Timothy 1, 15. This is a what? Faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. <laughs> However, for this reason, I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Long suffering is called training. Oh, Lord, I want to be your army. I want to be a soldier in your army. Oh, no, I ain't doing that, man. Oh, man, it's suffering. I don't like, no. You kidding me? Deny myself? Are you kidding? Far be it that I should be submissive. I just want to serve you. I don't want to obey you. That is the attitude of many believers. No, I want to serve you, but I, no, I'm not submitting to no office. I ain't go, I'm not going to get involved in any fellowship, Lord. No. I'll just follow you. Bonk. No, you won't. You're following you. See, this is where people substitute. There's a substitution going on. They substitute the will of God for their will. When there's supposed to be an expression, expressing God's will, they substitute God's will. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 17. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. This I charge, this charge I commit to you, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may war, wage the what? Good warfare, having faith and good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith has suffered what? Shipwreck. And whom Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Whoa. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to, to what? Is a faithful person associated with spiritual protocol. Yes. Yes. Oh, they may be faithful to come, but they're not faithful to submit. There's a difference. Submit in all things. That's called spiritual protocol. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of what? This life. This life is associated with living under... Satan's temporary system. Because you'll get your butt kicked. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Those rules are called spiritual protocol. Amen. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. I'm going to close at Ephesians 4 in verse 11. And he, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers 
for equipping the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So those are offices, aren't they? Are they a man's office or the Lord's office? Amen. Verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, known as the anointing. Because the anointing, the gates of hell can't prevail against the anointing. You can't expect the anointing to be on your life if you're not walking according to spiritual protocol. You will not be able to resist the devil. Because the anointing, the level of the anointing that you are needed is not released. Verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So can there be growth if individuals are not living according to spiritual protocol. No, it causes an unbalance. That means that somebody has to make up what you're not. It causes a drag on the body. Think about it. If everybody was doing what God had called them to do, how much more advanced we would be. Amen? How much more advanced we would be. And you don't want to stand before the Lord and sense that, Man, I was a drag. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry I didn't, didn't submit, Lord. It's too late now. You're standing before him. He needs you here on this side. He doesn't need you on the other side. Amen? That's eternal. That, that's coming. He needs you now on this side to battle. Remember, we are called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system with the talents and abilities. But we must be backed by the anointing and have authority according to spiritual protocol. Hallelujah. Verse 17. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord that you should no longer walk as the what? Rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Now, is the life of God submission and divine order, spiritual protocol? Yes. Even Jesus walked in divine order. He submitted to his parents, even though he got lost for three days. <laughs> and then what did he say? I was about my father's business. And mom took him by the ear and said, follow me, son. Jesus learned by his sufferings. He learned obedience. You want to earn the trust of God? You got to die. It can't be your way. There is no option of going the other way. You must make it a part of your life that I, that is not an option to go back to the world. It is not an option to lust. It is not an option to touch unclean things. It is not an option. So that when you find yourself being tricked into it, bam, you slam it, repent, and you don't go there. It's not an option. Having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Verse 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. How can you learn him if you're not in spiritual protocol? You can't. In fact, he won't allow you to know him. Do you remember the ones that said, Lord, Lord, I did this for you. I did that for you. And he said, I don't know who you are. What do you mean? I know you. No, I don't know you. You used my word. You used me to benefit you. But I didn't use you. There's a difference. See, you can use God's spiritual laws and prosper and never know him. But you've not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard from him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your formal conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, living under Satan's temporary system. 
and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So how are you going to give place to the devil? Do your own thing. Submit to God, resist the devil. No submission, no resist. It's impossible. No matter what you try to do, until there's proper protocol and falling in line according to proper protocol. You, begin, you must begin to look as this is a military because it is. We are soldiers in an eternal military. Amen. God has placed people in position. There's divine order and there's spiritual protocol. No matter what it, it is associated in every ministry and every office that God has established on this planet so that we can all become like-minded. Amen? You cannot make it on your own. Nothing worse than get before God and find out that you were successful in the wrong assignment and it counted for nothing. And you worked your whole life in hope that you were doing the will of God. There is no hope of doing the will of God. You know you're doing the will of God. If you are hoping you are, you are not. Has everybody got it? Listen, that's why God placed offices. So, so that we can hear the voice of God until we can discern it, his voice more. Amen? His whole purpose is that you know him personally. You know, I'll never forget because when the Lord said to me one day, he says, I want you to go to this. Uh, there was a prophet in town. He says, I want you to go. I said, I don't want to go. Well, well, I can hear your voice. I said, I know who you are. He said, I know you know who I am. He said, but I want you to go be a part of the body. I said, okay, I'll go. So I went. I was sitting in this room. And this prophet called me out and said all of these things and whatever. Everything was confirmed. Okay, thank you. Praise God. I went home. Okay, I went. Good. Now I want you to learn my word. I want you to do this and I want you to do that. I want you to be submissive. Okay. Got involved in the body and so forth and whatever. Then uh, this guy, a friend of mine came by and he says, hey, man, let's go see this prophet and whatever. And I thought, man, you know, I don't, I don't know if I should go or not. He says, oh, come on, let's go. So I went with him. And this prophet stood up and spoke over me, and it was not God. I had to break everything he spoke off of me. Why? Because I wasn't supposed to be there. I wasn't supposed to be there. I don't chase words. I chase the Lord. I don't need a word from anybody. I need his presence and a word from him. I want to know him. But when we don't know his voice good enough, we need to hear, don't we? It isn't the man that teaches. It's the anointing that teaches. It's not the man. And we've got to stop looking at men. We've got to look beyond here and look at the Lord's authority, the Lord's protocol. When we're non-submissive to a person in authority, that is non-submissive to God. It's not an area of control. It's an area of training. When you go to work and you're late, you can lose your job. Aren't you earning the trust of your boss and how frequent you are? And how diligent you are and how sober minded you are and how, in other words, you don't have to be watched. You're doing things extra. You know, a person that has a job and calls himself a believer that tries to cheat out and do everything lazy is a poor example of Christ. In fact, I don't even consider that person a believer. He's a user of God. He has no relationship whatsoever. No fear of the Lord. None. None. There is no relationship. And let me tell you, if you don't have a relationship, you should be shaking in your boots. Because if you don't know him, you're in trouble. He desires to know you. Don't reject him. Accept him. Learn or you burn. Amen? God is placing everything in order. Things are tightening up right now. Things are tightening up really strong. He's moving very quickly. Empowering, chastening, correcting and exposing. It's time. You can't play religion no more, and you can't hide behind crowds. It's right there. He's right in front of you right now. Amen? Don't lose sight and stay in spiritual protocol. In the multitude of counsel, there's safety and wisdom. Submit to God, then you can resist the devil. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. That scripture is associated with spiritual protocol. Amen?
Everybody okay? Praise God. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise, and we thank you. We thank you for your mercies, your grace, and your faithfulness. And, Lord, again, we ask for your forgiveness in any area where we are not walking according to your protocol. We ask, Lord, that you'd wash us with the blood, forgive us, and put us back in divine order. Set our families in order. Set our house in order. Set our hearts in order. Set our minds in order. And set our children in order. That we may be in order in all things in pleasing you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.